attacks, dangerous drugs, car crash cases, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys of Hollis Wright & Couch are here to serve you. With civil trial lawyer Josh Wright from the firm of Hollis Wright & Couch and Alabama's 13 host, David Lamb, the attorneys answer your tough legal questions straight ahead. Hello and welcome into the attorneys. I'm David Lamb. Thanks so much for being with us this evening. A reminder as we kick the show off tonight that we would love to hear from you. Several ways for you to get in touch with us. You can call us, text us, or email, email us. That information will be on the screen all throughout the night. Our panel of experts is led once again by Josh Wright of the firm Hollis Wright and Couch. Good to see you, sir. You too. Hope uh, you had a good week. It did indeed. Our topic of conversation tonight. You know, sometimes we life throws you some curveballs and you got to deal with things you really don't want to or hope to yeah. uh, that, that's kind of our topic tonight divorce and child support issues. there's there's no doubt and, and tonight's show is not just about how to get a divorce it is how to protect your rights and the things that you need to do to make sure that you're covered from a custody perspective an alimony perspective and if life does throw the divorce curveball how you handle it and, 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 and who you go talk to to lead yourself through that process um, when we deal with issues of divorce, uh, we oftentimes will go to Sandy Gregory's firm, and uh, Keith uh, uh, Brazier is here today from her firm, Gregory Burns and Brazier, and they do this work, they understand it, they get it, and they're involved in these types of cases on a daily and weekly basis. So uh, when we need an expert, these are the folks we go to, and they do a great job. So we're glad to have you on the uh, show. Thank you very much. Yep. Good to be here. Yep. Keith, appreciate the time tonight. And just as, as a good uh, kind of a kicking off point in, in, uh, as far as an overview, in the state of Alabama, how are the laws set up here, and, and, and who do they really protect and look out for? Well, the laws that pertain to divorce and child custody and all of those issues are governed by the Alabama legislature. They pass the laws, and those laws are in the Alabama Code. And those laws deal from everything from child custody, visitation, property division, uh, retirement, all of those issues. That's a legislative um, prerogative, and it's in the Alabama Code, and that's what governs it. The circuit courts in Al Alabama have jurisdiction uh, to divorce parties and over these issues. Okay. Uh, it, property that was bought during a marriage. How is that, how is that property divided uh, in case of divorce? Good question. Well, typically property that is bought during a marriage is marital property. Okay. Um, and even if it wasn't bought during the marriage, if it's property that you brought into the marriage, but it was used during the marriage, it's marital property. For example, if a husband owned a house prior to marriage, and then he gets married, the wife lives in the house, they raise a family there, that house is up for division. Mm -hmm. um, it's marital property. So typically anything that is used during the marriage is marital property and is subject to division by court during a divorce. Okay. Uh, how, how does that work? Just to kind of put it in context for the viewers. Um, is property divided equally? Uh, if they're marital assets um, uh, during the course of marriage, uh, wealth that's built, for example, during a marriage, is it divided equally or is it discretionary with the court? How does that work? Well, Alabama is what they call an equitable distribution state. But equitable does not mean equal. That does not mean 50-50. Um, what it means is whatever the judge thinks is fair, okay. depending on the circumstances. The judge is charged by law with dividing the property in an equitable manner. And the judge will take several um, factors into consideration, including conduct of the parties, um, uh, health of the parties, education, um, their employment history, and will try to fashion a uh, property division um, that is equitable or fair to both parties. But that in Alabama does not mean 50-50. Right. Okay. Hmm. Uh, we love uh, questions from you. Again, uh, you'll see the number on the screen throughout the show as well as the way that you can text and email us. A question that we have in, uh, and I'll just pose it to you too. My father started a business that I now own since my father's retirement. If I file for divorce, well, I, I have to split my business with my wife who has worked there for a number of years. Unfortunately, the answer, I think, is potentially yes. Go ahead. Potentially, the answer is yes. And um, uh, if you have a family business that um, has been a source of income during the marriage, again, that is subject to division by the court. 
Now, a, a court's not automatically going to slice up a business. A court's going to um, look at factors such as alimony. Is this an alimony case? If it is, then um, the husband, for example, if he owns the business and is to pay alimony to the wife, he's going to need a source of income, and a judge will realize that. Um, however, um, a judge can divide the equity in a business, particularly the value of the business um, that was created during the marriage. And a lot of times in divorce cases, um, there will have to be a financial uh, expert to establish the value of the business. You'll have to present that evidence to the judge. The judge can sometimes make one party buy out the other party's interest in the business. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the judge can order the business to be sold and the proceeds divided. Um, so that is up for division. Some divorces are no contest divorces or where there's an agreement between the parties. Others are contested divorces. When you're dealing with these types of assets, you're generally going to be dealing with contested divorces and you need to get to a lawyer. That, that's correct. And in, divor in divorces where there are a lot of assets, you really need the advice of an attorney and oftentimes the advice of a financial professional as well. Uh, but, uh, talking there about uh, uh, divorce and, and just the, uh, kind of the, the, the separation of property, we have a number of questions coming up having to do with uh, children uh, and, and those sort of issues. First of all, just kind of as an overview, how does child custody actually work? Well, there are really two prongs to custody in Alabama. There's legal custody and physical custody. Okay. Now, first of all, legal custody deals with who makes the decisions regarding the children, okay. all right? Who is their legal guardian? A lot of times that'll be joint. Um, the, uh, mother and father will have joint custody, joint legal custody. Then there's physical custody. That is, where do the children reside for a majority of the time? Now, typically in Alabama, the courts are favoring one party being the primary physical custodian and the other party having visitation with the children. Okay. Is that always the female, generally? It's or? not. It is not always the female. And in fact, um, uh, in the last few years, there has been a move to where the courts have become um, really non-biased, non-gender biased. You know, back in the day, yeah. um, typically children would be with the mother, but, mm -hmm. but now it is whoever is best fit, whoever's the best fit parent. Is conduct uh, of the parties uh, in the divorce relevant to who's best fit? Absolutely, <coughs> um, it, and, and that's what attorneys show at trial. Um, past conduct of, of the parties, that's a future predictor of the way they're going to perform and take care of the children. And, and just real quickly, while we're here on this subject, before we move on to some good questions, um, how about just alimony? How is alimony supposed to work? Because we're, we're talking, uh, you, you were talking there about custody. That's right. Um, alimony in Alabama, um, there are many factors that a court will consider. There is no set um, equation for alimony. A lot of people think, well, if I've been married uh, 10 years, I'm going to get alimony. That's not the case. What a court will consider are factors such as education of the parties, um, their employment history, um, the health of the parties. Um, for example, if you have had, um, if you have a party on disability who can't earn income, um, there are many factors that go into alimony and it's in the court's discretion. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, alimony is a factor when it's a long-term marriage over 10 years, but right. that's not always the case. Alimony can be paid um, in gross as a lump sum. Um, it can be periodic al alimony, which is paid month to month, a certain amount each month. And then there's rehabilitative alimony, which is short-term alimony to help one spouse get back on his or her feet, um, get back into school, get a degree, and, and find a job. Okay. Uh, a question here having to do with uh, um, medical insurance. Can a court order that my husband keep medical insurance coverage on our children until they reach the age of 18? Yes, they, they can and they, they will. Really? Um, uh, courts typically um, will make sure that one party is covering the children um, as far as medical insurance is concerned. And not only till their age 18, or actually age 19, which is the age of majority in Alabama, but if they go to college, oftentimes the court will extend that requirement until the child reaches the age of 23 or obtains their college degree. I think what you'll find, David, especially with, with the local bar here, um, the judges are objective, and they're supposed to be, in assessing what's right for the family. Um, but if they're going to be biased anywhere, it's going to be with the children and making sure that the kids are properly 
Um, uh, they, they've got medical insurance, they're properly protected, and they're in the right place at the right time. We have a great judiciary here in Jefferson County, and they are focused like a laser on the best interests of the children in these cases. They're very concerned about children um, coming out of these cases emotionally strong and stable, and that's a very good point. Yeah. Okay, uh, coming up after the break, a question about the calculation of child support. Uh, a member of uh, uh, a, a, a divorcee here does not really think it's uh, being done fairly. We'll get to that question as we head to break, though, a reminder, uh, plenty of time for you to get your questions to us. You can call, text, or email them to uh, the uh, information you see right there on your screen. You can also Hollis, so uh, find Hollis Wright and Couch Law Firm. Just search that term on Facebook, Hollis underscore Wright, to find them on Twitter. Uh, more of the attorneys coming right up. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright and Couch, and thanks for watching the attorneys on Alabama's 13. Now we hope you, a friend or a loved one, never need legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of the show is simple. Provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free, so if you have questions specific to this show or related to other civil legal matters, call, email, or text us to talk with one of our lawyers. You can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter to learn about important legal news that could affect you or your family or simply contact us by going to alabamas13.com and click on the attorney's link. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us and for watching the attorneys right here on Alabama's 13. Defective products. Passing along some helpful information, what the attorneys is all about. Uh, about to get to a question from a viewer, a reminder uh, that we'd love to get your question. And if you want to get that to our panel, you need to, to head to the computer or use that uh, smartphone and get it to us. Uh, ways you could do so, there's a, a number there you can call, you can text, or you can email. Get it to us, and I'll be glad to, to pass it along to our panel of experts. As we were headed to break, talking about this question uh, uh, coming from someone not, not sure about how the calculation of child support is, is done. How does child Child support work to calculate how much my ex-husband should be paying, not happy with the amount that's coming in right now. Well, unlike alimony, child support is calculated pursuant to a mathematical formula. Um, the child support guidelines that are found in the Alabama Rules of Judicial Administration, you actually take um, each party's gross income, you plug it in, you also plug in costs for uh, daycare, um, for health insurance, and out pops the number. Okay. And there is not much you can do about that. It is what it is, as they say, and it's a mathematical formula. And a lawyer can easily help you estimate uh, what that calculation would be. Are there um, examples where a court judge, for example, has discretion with a very high income person to require more child support? How, how does that work? Yes. Um, if, if you have a, an extraordinarily high income, you go over the guidelines, okay? Um, they only go up to a certain amount. Um, then the judge has the discretion to set child support um, based on the needs of the children and then the income of the parties. All right, a question here, uh, what can I do if my ex uh, is uh, not providing court-ordered child support and alimony, if they're just completely not taking care of it and not paying it? Well, what you need to do is speak to a lawyer, because a lawyer can help you file a petition asking the court, essentially, to hold them in, t in contempt of court, um, to make them answer for themselves why they haven't been, went, been paying that amount. Um, and not only will the court enforce its order, but the court can also uh, enforce interest. And in Alabama, interest is 12% on a judgment, and child support and alimony is a judgment. And so the court um, is bound to assess 12% interest on what they owe as well. Hmm. Uh, and, and quickly, as I recall, each month is a new court order for child support. That's so correct. just because they finally caught up last month, uh, because the court required them to. If they don't do it again, each month is a separate court order that you can enforce and hold them to. That, that's correct. And, and I, I think one of the lessons here is um, don't allow child support to build up so much and things get stale and people move and they become difficult to find and reach 
uh, stay on top of the person to make sure they're paying to child support. I mean, I think that's probably the general advice that has been used. I would agree. And another thing, um, a, a lot of usually husbands who are paying child support now are preferring what's called an income withholding order, um, whereas child support is taken directly out of their paycheck each month. That way, they don't have to worry about. It. Yeah, it's automatically deducted and and it's sent to the other to the former spouse and taken care of. Okay, uh, uh, um, a question here uh, from a viewer: uh, a spouse, um, the the, uh, the mom that has custody of the child, wants to relocate to another city. Uh, the father does not like that idea options? Does he have options? He certainly does. In Alabama, we have the relocation notice requirements. That is language that's required by the legislature to be put in every order that's dealing with child custody or visitation. Now, what this means is either party, whether you have custody or not, um, either party has to notify the other any time they move. They have to provide them the new address, telephone number, mailing address, etc. And the, the non-moving party has the right to object to that move if it's more than 60 miles. So, and there's certain requirements you have to notify within 45 days prior to the move, and then the other party has 30 days to object. And a court can actually prevent a party from moving or change custody. Yeah, and explain, if you will, just for the viewers, how does custody change? Let's assume, for example, you know, you can't find work here and you have to go to Mississippi because there's a job mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to lose custody of your children. Will the court work with the parties to try and facilitate a way that that you can still share some form of custody or how's that work? Well, the court really won't facilitate it, but the parties can and the sure. parties should. Yeah. Um, the, oftentimes parties get caught up in, in throwing dirt back and forth at each other and trying to get at the other party when they need to be focused on the children and what's best for the children. Um, if it's a move to a neighboring state like Mississippi, a lot of times visitation can still be facilitated from state to state and it's not a problem. But when you have a move um, halfway across the country, yeah. that's when it, when it does become a problem. Yeah, it gets much more difficult. A question here about retirement benefits. How are they split in a divorce? Well, for retirement benefits to be split, um, the legislature has said you have to be married for 10 years or longer. Okay. All right, if you've been married 10 years or longer, then retirement can be divided. And what can be divided is the uh, retirement benefits that have accrued during the marriage, and the court is authorized to divide up to 50%. Okay. Uh, a viewer tossed in a legal term at us. You ready for this? Okay. I was told there's something called collaborative law in a divorce. <laughs> the collaborative are law. Are they watching too much TV? <laughs> no, they, they are not. They are on, on top of the pulse. This is the wave of the future. All right. Collaborative of divorce law. law. Collaborative law. This is a paradigm shift in divorce. Um, this is a type of law where the parties come together with their attorneys and say, we are not going to court. We're going to settle this case. We're going to do it in, res in a respectful manner that's in the best interests of our family. In collaborative law, you have um, two attorneys and the two parties. You have an independent financial analyst and either one or two um, psychologists. One could be a, a child specialist. And you have a series of meetings in which everything's on the table. You don't play games. You don't hide assets. Um, everything's on the table. And you structure an agreement that is going to allow you to function as a family after the divorce as opposed to going into court and ripping each other apart and then expecting the family to function after that. And what collaborative divorce prevents is going to court over and over and over again. Right. It really cuts down on uh, modifications or holding people in contempt and um, it, it really provides a respectful manner um, that's focused on the family and I'm very excited about it. Still a final order that's entered that is enforceable on a moving forward basis. Absolutely. Once you reach an agreement you submit it to the court. The court signs off on it. Now the other thing about collaborative is if it breaks down and you have to go to court those two attorneys who are involved have to withdraw. Those attorneys are not going to go to court for you. Um, and you can find more information by going to BirminghamCollaborative.com. That's the Birmingham Collaborative Alliance. That's a group of attorneys who are practicing collaborative law in Birmingham. That's neat. All right, yeah, it is. All right, stay with us. Our final segment of the attorneys coming right up after this short break. Again, a reminder, I want to make sure that you're able to get in touch with the firm of Hollis Wright & Couch. You can call, text, email, find them on Facebook, search Hollis Wright & Couch, or on Twitter, Hollis underscore Wright. The final segment of the attorneys is coming right up.
From all of us at Hollis Wright and Couch, we're proud to team up with Alabama's 13 to present the attorneys each Sunday night. Our goal, to answer your tough questions and provide legal support when you need it most. Remember, you can call, text, or email us your legal questions anytime. This week's topic relates to divorce, domestic relations, and child custody issues. Here are a few facts you need to know. Do your research. For example, in order to obtain a divorce in Alabama, one of the parties must have lived here for at least six months before filing for a divorce. You can legally separate, however. You don't have to go through with a full divorce. Some couples may object to divorce because of religious convictions or in order to retain health insurance or military benefits. This is called a divorce from bed and board or a suit for separate maintenance. It's more commonly called a legal separation. Either way, the parties remain married after the legal proceedings. As in a divorce, custody of any children, child support, alimony, and property use or division are considered. Alabama has many grounds for a divorce. Some of these grounds include voluntary abandonment for one year, physical cruelty, adultery, addiction to alcohol or drugs, incompatibility of temperament or irretrievable breakdown of the marriage. Incompatibility and breakdown of the marriage are the basis for a no-fault divorce, and the majority of divorces these days are granted on these grounds. Finally, uncontested divorces can be quicker and less expensive than contested divorces. Both parties, however, have to agree to all the terms. These include child custody, child support, visitation, alimony, or property division. If you have any ideas for future shows, please let us know. Also remember, your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright & Couch want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. We can't guarantee we'll answer every question during the show, but we can guarantee a competent lawyer will respond to every question you send in. Thanks for watching the attorneys here on Alabama's 13. Our final segment here of the attorneys for this night, but a couple of minutes left for you to get your uh, questions to our panel of experts. I want to get to as many questions as we can. I have one here about a, a child about to head to college. I have a child who's applying for college. Is there a way that I could ask a court to order my ex-husband to pay for it? Uh, absolutely, and you, you have to file this petition for what's called post-minority um, expenses um, before the child turns 19. So as long as you file it before the child turns 19, a court can decide who is going to pay for college. And that can include room, books, tuition, um, and also things such as transportation, car insurance, and other necessities for college. So a court can, can decide that. Typically that issue, in a lot of divorce cases where the children are young, it's reserved, what we call reserved to the court, meaning the court will decide that later. You still have to file a petition before they turn 19, but a court typically won't decide that when a child's two or three years old because they don't know if they have the ability to go to college or, um, or what have right. you, but uh, a court can uh, divide up college expenses. All right, certainly has the uh, option to do that. Uh, another question here, what's Alabama standard visitation law and can divorcing parties agree on something else? Yeah. Well, typically each county has their own standard visitation language, as we call it. Mm -hmm. um, and typically you're looking at first and third weekends, um, uh, four weeks maybe during the summer and holidays divided up. Now this can be particular with each county so depending what county you file your divorce in you're, you should ask your attorney for a copy of that county's standard visitation language or the language used by that judge. Now you can vary from it in an agreement but if you vary too far sometimes a judge can reject your agreement if they don't feel like it's an appropriate schedule. Okay. Is there a schedule in Alabama that allows for equal visitation during a week, Sunday through Wednesday night at one parent's house in the same school system, same neighborhood, you know, but Thursday to Saturday with someone else, does that work? Or? Well, well, some judges ha have done that, you know, a week with one parent and a week with another parent. Most judges tend to disfavor that because they believe that standard visitation provides for stability, and that's a very important consideration. And going from one parent to another week to week, they think it's kind of an unstable environment. 
There are certain cases, though, where that would work when the parents live very close to each other. Yeah. Um, typically, a, a court will not order that in trial. Sometimes they will approve it in the settlement. Okay. okay. Uh, another question from a viewer here. If we have joint custody and can't agree on extracurricular activities, um, they say like church or school activities of kids, who decides and how is the decision made? Very practical issue. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is. Um, Typically, a court will address this um, in a final judgment of divorce, or you can address it in your settlement. Um, for example, one party may have the final say-so on every issue, but a lot of times what the courts will do is put in tiebreakers. And they will say, for example, husband will have the final say-so on academic issues. Um, mom will have the final say-so on religious issues. So a court can actually take each category of decisions and say one parent has the final decision-making authority, even though both parents are bound, usually, to try to come to an agreement beforehand and to discuss the issue first. But if they can't reach a decision, usually somebody's designated as having the final say-so. Those, unfortunately, are probably the uh, uh, most difficult divorces to make it through emotionally because of the fact that you're, you have to be totally micromanaged by, by a court order. Every single decision micromanaged, and, and it, can, it can be a nightmare. Yeah. Let, let's try to get to one more question real quick. Have two children with my soon-to-be ex. Can a court order uh, say that our children be split between my husband and myself or one lives with him and the other with me? That would be a very rare circumstance. I've seen it happen before under particular circumstances, but that is often not the case. The children are typically, typically going to stay together. Yeah. Okay. Um, time now for our uh, final word. Um, Keith, from you. Well, I, I would just like to say, you know, my parents are still married. Mm -hmm. I was not the product of divorce, um, but this issue is very important to me because of children and families. I feel that families are very important, and um, it's something at our firm we strive to do um, to make sure that the family's taken care of. Mm -hmm. All right, Josh? Yeah, I think, you know, <clears throat> you want to get with somebody that knows what they're doing. Keith's a good example of, of a lawyer that uh, can do this. As we often say, you know, you don't necessarily have to come to us. Go to somebody, but Keith's a good resource for this type of stuff. And you want to get with somebody that's going to hold your hand through the process, both emotionally and from a legal perspective. And, and enjoy the time tonight. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank both you. Both fellas. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday night, folks. Have a great weekend. Our final segment here of the attorneys for this night, but a couple of minutes left for you to get your uh, questions to our panel of experts. I want to get to as many questions as we can. I have one here about a, a child about to head to college. I have a child who's applying for college. Is there a way that I could ask a court to order my ex-husband to pay for it? Uh, absolutely. And you, you have to file this petition for what's called post-minority um, expenses um, before the child turns 19. So as long as you file it before the child turns 19,